Mate, <laughs> this, this is a joke. Come on, come have a look. What? <laughs> This, bro, is your, this is your room. This is my room, bro. I'm just showing Lindor around now. This is a sauna. My own sauna. You, we can... It's massive. <laughs> I know. Holy shit. <laughs> They've got the hot coals on. Has wow. it been on the whole time? No, I just turned it on this morning. I thought oh. I'd have a quick sauna. Shower. Come through, come oh. through, come through. This is actually outrageous. Mate, toilet in here. This is like MTV Cribs. This is <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep coming through. You got a reception in here. I've got a bar. Whiskey bar. Whiskey bar. The 360 bed. <laughs> Holy moly. This is ridiculous. Mental it. <laughs> this is like something out of Austin Powers, this bed. This is mad. <laughs> this is mad. I'm just having a quick chat with Lindell today. She's obviously a bit. Jealous that she's not with us, but... Oh my god! Yeah, this is the <laughs> definition of FOMO of the room like this, holy <laughs> moly. Yeah, so we arrived, we, well, we wanted to get here at what? 10 o'clock last night, we ended up getting here at quarter past 12. And uh, the guy said, oh... It's been a mix up with the rooms. And we're like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I was like, unfortunately, we've had to upgrade you. So I had a fucking nice room. <laughs> but I feel like I've been underdone here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a sauna. Quick. We can, Holy as long as we leave it by eight, we'll make the seven off eight per. This is actually unreal. I've even dried all my kit today. Oh, did you put it in the sauna? No, but I'm gonna. Well, it's pretty dry. Oh mate, if you don't snatch one fifty today or clean jerk one ninety, I don't know what's going on. I don't cleaned it one eighty at least. I haven't had a piece of this in a long time. Black pudding. What's the plan for today, brother? First seminar, bro. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest. <laughs> I haven't done a seminar this big in absolute ages, so I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it, but I'm a bit nervous. What number of seminars is this for you now? 126, and I still get nervous. Should we rob the roll? There's a couple there. We might as well take one of them. Go on. The guys are really cool here, everyone's from this gym and everyone's a great crack, so it's making my life nice and easy this morning. We've just taken them through mobility. Again, most people when they come to a seminar have never spent an hour and a half specifically on mobility before. So when they get around to lifting, they're like, fuck, I feel so loose, so mobile. I'm like, have you ever spent that long mobilizing before? And they're like, no. Well, this is the thing, you know? It's really important that you increase range of motion before you load. So taking them through this process on a seminar day can be extremely valuable, which is why about 20 people in the room just hit PB there already in the day because they've actually mobilized first. So it's the quickest way to lift more weight without getting any fucking stronger. Mate, what a crowd. <laughs> Mate, I think this is the most amount of people I've lifted in front of since the Olympics. Did you tell me the world champs didn't have this many people? Mate, actually then, this is more people than the world champs. <laughs> Sometimes I hunt for the stone just to weather it. Prefer them deadly than challenge accepted. And don't get too friendly, my motives are treacherous. Is it the line between pain or pleasure? And you go know, for the left for me. It's always about making sure that I'm filling up my lungs as best as possible before I initiate the movement. But also for me to be able to settle myself before I lift, taking those deep breaths before I start helps me stay calm. And Especially once the weight gets heavier, like, and I always say this, as the weight gets heavier, my ability to, and same for you guys, your concentration levels have to narrow as well. You have to get more and more focused on that given lift. It's something that's difficult to do sometimes when there's lots of people in the gym, all your friends are there, and you're chitting and chatting, and then you're taking your focus there, and then trying to bring it back to zone in on like a lifetime PB. So one thing that you'll notice for me that, I'm doing before I go for that lift, having that few seconds to actually breathe is making me settle and focus back in on the task that, that I've got to do there. All right, so for me, especially for a complex, like when I'm doing multiple movements all at once, which I'll do with this way, okay, I'm having to make sure that I'm getting my oxygen in throughout the movement. Everything said I'm ready for any and everything. Mama said that I could be so many things, but this morning I chose to be menacing. I said everything, baby, everything. Said I'm ready for any and everything. Mama said that I could be so many things, but this morning I chose to wake up and be ready to fight. Everything, everything. Tell them I'm ready for anything. Everything, everything. We look at failure sometimes 
or mislifts as negative things, but it's also our biggest opportunity to, to grow and develop. And when shit things happen, it's only then that you have a look back and review them, but you need to do the, the same approach to, to good things as well. If something great happens in your life or something, you know, you achieve something, why did it fucking happen? So that you can try and continue to replicate that for more good things to happen. The same thing works with negative things. And that's why I think the one quote that's kind of always stuck with me is the biggest lessons you learn are when you lose. Because I've taken every bad thing that's ever happened to me in my life and used that as like the propelling to go and move on and move forward again. So I think that and the things that always inspire me has never been one particular person, but it's traits of people that I, just, I aspire to be like when I get older or you know, further down in my life, I'd love to be perceived in, in that light. So it's been actions of people that, you know, not necessarily in sport either that have inspired me the most. It doesn't always work out like to fucking plan like that. It's great that, you know, it did. <laughs> Better for you guys, but I hope throughout that process, like you said, of seeing me miss, which I think is such a valuable thing that you don't get to see from good lifters, and having that understanding of what I did to change it will be something that will work for you too. Because the same process, regardless of the fact this is 180 kilos on the bar, or you're gonna do that with 60 kilos in a moment, it doesn't change. It's exactly the same. So the things that I'm thinking about, the way that I problem solve, the way that I try and take my emotional brain out of the lift and focus on the things that, the process and the things that I'm in control of makes a fucking difference. All right, so thank you so much for your support. Your fucking atmosphere was sick then, which definitely made that 10 times easier for me. How did you find that lifting? It was amazing, he's unreal. Yeah? Unreal. <laughs> Especially my sister, uh, Neway. It's, it's yeah, I love it. I love you, <laughs> Sonny. <laughs> was, was there any key takeaways from watching that, other than looking well, at his rig? Like several. Um, especially psyching yourself up, talk, not talking yourself out, you have it. <laughs> and thinking before you do it. Yeah, because yeah. usually, usually you walk in and you're like, oh, I'm not going to get this, and you can see how you stop it. Yeah. Psyching yourself up will actually help you get the lift too. Well, you, you're turning into a bit of a habit, missing the lift. Like, like I said, I haven't done 180 in absolute ages, so for me, like, they got to see firsthand me figuring it out. Like, as like I said, people don't see miss lifts so much on the internet, but they happen to absolutely everyone and for me I was just happy that like my process to figure shit out worked there and they got to see it work firsthand because I think it gives everyone that's here an understanding of like how to approach mistakes and how to overcome them and that also my approach and my methods actually work in practice too because I think a lot of the times when someone's coaching you or giving you knowledge it's hard to just believe it and see that it's actually gonna work. Whereas when I'm doing it myself and it's fucking working, the likelihood is going away from this seminar today, people are gonna implement those things and get benefit out of it too, which is like, for me, the most important thing. Okay, how nice are the Irish people? Mate, it's so nice. Literally, Gary from check-in there just said to speak to Lindsay on the flight and we can have a cheeky beverage. <laughs> how good's that? That's unheard of. I know. Can and you I'm... imagine that customer service anywhere else? No, and our bags were like 20 <laughs> years overweight. <laughs> Thank you, Bad Flash. You've been brilliant. <laughs> you can't keep yourself out of it, can you, mate? Hey, it's time to fucking send it. I walked in here and I was like, I ain't gonna li lift today, I'm just gonna coach. And then the fucking vibe in here, I was just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>